Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 13th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Brad wrote up what he's currently seeing with password protected zip files, not the latest trick to actually get people to install malicious code on their system, but apparently still working. He found 66 different password protected zip archives just for Tuesday this week. And well, they sort of all do the same thing once you unzip the archive and the password is usually three digits like 111 or 222 and you have to of course enable macros and what you'll end up with is UR sniff which is known for stealing passwords and banking information and then connecting back to a command and control server. Also sort of interesting that uh, these particular emails were written in Italian. Of course, we have seen this uh, where the bad guys are venturing out into various languages in order to find new pools of users that may not be quite as used uh, to uh, these tricks. Sadly, these documents with uh, macros still continue to be a huge problem, even though, well, everybody should know that this is how a lot of compromise is happening by now, but a lot of companies still use macros, so users can't just not enable them. To help with this, Microsoft is starting to experiment with a feature they're calling safe documents. Essentially, the way it works is if a user does open a document in protected view. This feature will scan the macros in the document and don't allow the user to actually disable protected view if it detects suspicious macros. Pretty interesting feature right now only available sort of as a preview for Office 365 Pro Plus customers. This is a part of the advanced threat protection feature and should show up for other Office 365 customers in the future. And remember when GDPR came out and everybody added cookie notices to their websites, one of these sort of little bit odd side effects was a vulnerable WordPress plugin. The plugin's only job was to display that cookie notice, but due to a vulnerability in the plugin, this was like back in late 2018, if I remember correctly, you could actually take over the WordPress website. Well, why let a neat, weird bug go wasted? Why not do it again? Turns out yesterday, another GDPR cookie plugin was fixed that again allowed essentially a take over of a WordPress site. The tricky part here is or the reason why this particular plugin was vulnerable was that it did allow the administrator to update the text being displayed as part of the GDPR cookie notice. Well, uh, but they messed up authentication so that anybody can essentially update the text with whatever text they would like. And then of course, inject malicious JavaScript or do whatever you would essentially do with cross-site scripting, even though technically that's not really cross-site scripting anymore. Well, uh, the solution pretty straightforward. Update the plugin, this is the GDPR cookie consent uh, plugin and apparently has over 700,000 installs. One of the things that I'm always interested in, of course, is, well, how to get beyond passwords. And one of the sort of efforts that I consider the most promising is FIDO2 and some of the associated standards. Now, one sort of missing piece here has often been in the past Apple. Apple, in its very recent update to Safari and Mac OS, finally sort of added some of these standards and looks like there's now more commitment from Apple to actually continue to support these standards by now becoming a board level member of the FIDO Alliance. With this, they should be more actively involved in creating these standards. And with this, all the big browser makers and a lot of other e-commerce companies and such are part of this standard. And if you're actually more interested in FIDO2 and some of these standards, have 
have two things for you. Uh, Kudelski uh, Security, they came up uh, with a real neat sort of summary of FIDO2, exactly how it works. Uh, fairly detailed, they call it the FIDO2 Deep Dive. Also, if you want to get a little bit sort of hands-on experience uh, with some of this at the RSA conference, uh, Jason Lamb and I will have a learning lab. So uh, if you are registered for the conference, you can attend this for free. It's a two hour session where we'll sort of have some hands-on exercises going over some code and how to implement this in particular on mobile websites where I think this standard really has a lot of promise. So check out the Kotelski security block or well, join Jason and me when we're going to do some of these demos at RSA in a couple of weeks. And well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.